Have you ever had something break or wear out around the house and you thought, if I could just make or replace this little part, everything else is good to go? Well, that's what this video is all about, making a small brass bushing. Now, let's get into that. A friend of mine calls me the other day. Turns out he would like me to make a small brass bushing. I told him I don't have any brass, but he gives me this. This uh, piece of material isn't the best. It looks like it used to be used as a drift or, and I know I'm not even sure it's brass, but anyway, there's enough material here to cut it down and uh, make what he's asking. I'll put this in here and start turning it. I took a small cut on this and it appears to be brass. What I need to do is bring the OD down to 1,000th over 3 eighths of an inch, which is 376. And the ID needs to end up at 120, 126, 1,000th over an eighth inch. Let's get into that. Let's make a quick measurement and see where we're at. That's 437, that's 16 inch to take off. 10, 20. I usually feed by hand. Unless it's a finished cut. Thirty, forty. Measure that again. Four oh seven. That's twenty five thirty two thousandths. Ten. We'll feed by power feed it up to the dead stop. Let's measure it again. 75, 85, 86, 87, 387. I'm going to sneak up on that. 5,000. I believe if you want something precise on these smaller lays, you need to measure them after every cut. We have 82, 83, 383. If I took five, we're gonna take three thousandths. I could always polish it down to what I need if it doesn't seem to be cooperating, but it seems to be okay. 
so far. Seventy-five, seventy, six, seven, eight, seventy-eight, and he wanted it oversized. So I need to take two thousandths off of that and call it good. Should be it. Three seventy six. It's about three seventy six and a half, but I'm going to call that good. Uh, now you just need to face it off. Seems like there was a hole drilled in there. There we go. Okay, I have the OD turned down. I have it faced off. What I need to do now is spot drill it, drill it under size, and ream it. To spot drill it, I instead of a lot of people use center drills. I believe center drills are for putting centers in when you're gonna turn something on centers. I like to use a spotting drill. Then I'm going to use an undersized drill, probably a uh, Let's see, what it was it, uh, 116 thousandths, a number 32 drill. And then I will ream it oversized. Here's a, here's a picture of the tools I'm going to use. Okay, there's a spot. It's a good idea to always measure your drill. I don't care if you got it out of an index. I don't care if you got it out. And it was stenciled on here. Because once you drill that hole, if it's too big, it's a ruined part. Don't take that long to measure your drill bit. One sixteen. Okay. Let's drill this thing. Okay, I think that's deep enough. The bushing's only going to end up about a quarter inch long. He told me it can be a quarter to five sixteenths. I need to ream this 126 to measure it when I'm finished. I'm going to use a go and a no go pin. For people who don't know what that is, I have a gauge pin here that is 125, and that's the size shaft that it's going to go through there. He says he wants it oversized. So this 125 pin has to go through. I have a 127 pin that should not go in. 
They're referred to as a go and a no-go pin. What I like to do when I'm going to rim a hole, to make sure it's going to follow that hole, I like to bring the reamer right up to the hole and touch the material. That way, when it starts to turn, it's already centered. If there's any off-center, it doesn't bell mouth the beginning of the hole. Okay, I'm going to bring the reamer up to the hole. I'm going to run this somewhat slower than I've been turning it. Turn it on. And start reaming. If a reamer is sharpened correctly, it will follow that hole and not wander off. All right, let's stick that pin in there and see how it measures. It's really going to be nice once I get that tail stop, tail stock upgrade done. And I don't have to keep tightening and untightening. It'll just be a matter of using the lever. Okay. See if it goes in there. It does. Let's see if the 127 goes in. It does not. Okay. So it's somewhere between 125 and 127. I think that will satisfy him. Let's put the cutoff tool in here. What I like to do when I'm cutting off or facing is bring this carriage up against my dead stop. I always use dead stops. That way I can hold it up against the dead stop so the tool doesn't drift. He wants it between a quarter inch and five sixteenths. I'm going to set it at 9.30 seconds. That's close enough. So I don't lose the bushing. I have a 060 pin in here. And it's just pushed in. Nothing's tightened down. It's just to catch that bushing as it gets cut off. Let's uh, knock that burr off the end. And... Cut this thing off. I'm going to stop right here so I could put the file on the inside so I could knock the burr off of this side. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to by hand countersink that, or just breaking the edge there. I'm breaking the edge there. Okay. Two hundred and eighty-five. Three hundred and seventy-six and a half. 
And the ID we checked, the ID we checked with pins. So if my go pin, it goes on there. And as we saw, the no go will not go in either side. So that's my job for today. I think this video has come to a wrap and until next time, enjoy.